Smoke meets and spay casting, the hidden connection. It's the greatest topic that I've never picked. So thank you guys at the Ashton Fly Shop. <laughs> I was on the water yesterday and uh, me and the guy I was fishing with were trying to figure out how the hell we we're going to put those two together, making a plan how to bring smoke meats and spay casting and draw some parallels and analogies. And he owns a Traeger, as do I. Anyone own a Traeger in, in the, yeah? Not many hands went up. There's been some knockoffs since. They're a little cheaper, maybe a couple more features, but Traeger's the OG when it comes to smokers. They're originally made in Oregon by the Traeger family out of Mount Angel. I actually knew one of the sons. He was a starting quarterback at Western Oregon. I was one of his backups. I never saw the field, but the first team defense liked to beat up on me in scout team practice. So we talked about uh, methods of cooking ribs and he, he mentioned the 3-2-1 the method, and right then and there, the descending number just threw me off, and it was too much math for me to try and figure out. But I was, as I was driving here, as I was driving here, I was thinking about spay casts and cooking in general, whether you're cooking ribs or, you know, you're cooking a pizza. And there is a recipe for every meal right and parts of the recipes are the ingredients right and the time and the temperature right three things ingredients time and temperature and so if the recipe for a double spay or snake roll is what it is um, there's all those little variations and there's different ways to make a pizza or make ribs right so the ingredients of a spay cast would be not only all the parts of the cast, the technique, the stroke, but what also factor is, is the equipment. I have a 12 and a half foot seven weight here with a Skagit line and a sink tip. That's part of the ingredient of the spay cast. A short head requires a little bit different ingredient, which is part of the recipe, then making a, uh, a double spay with a, a longer head and a longer rod with a different line system. And then time and temperature, uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, let's, temperature would be the amount of speed, the amount of speed. You ever watch golf and they say, yeah, he overcooked that one a little bit, okay? He overcooked it. It didn't go straight. It went one way or the other, right? Well, you can do that with a spay cast. You can overcook it. And you can undercook it, too. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to undercook it. So the amount of speed, power, acceleration, that's the heat. That's the heat. And then the length of time that you cook something. That's the timing, the timing of a spay cast, the timing of the parts that all fit together, okay? So that's all I came up with. Hope you enjoy, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so but let's talk about the recipe of a particular spay cast. What is the most common spay cast, or, or a crowd favorite? Hey, just yell something out, anybody. Oh, Crosby, you had to pick that one, didn't you? <laughs> All right, I need that rod now. Single spay. So the single spay, the recipe for a single spay. Thank you, bud. Well, at least we're on river left for the single spay. There's several variations. You could call it style of single spay. 
and I'm not the expert on all the little different variations. There's other guys here that probably could do better at it than me. But there's several different ways to start the lift of a single spay and how you bring the rod across on the sweep. And so the, the, the recipe varies a little bit. But every good spay cast starts with a lift. And the lift is designed to break the surface tension so we can move the line into position. Now the single spay is a splash and go cast. And this just happens to be a hobo spay here that is looking for a home. Better not put it in my waders. Done that before. So a single spay starts with a lift, just like every good spay cast does. And I've got a 14 foot seven weight Sage X, and I've got a 460 Scandi at 37 feet and a 15 plus foot mono leader. So you know what I'm working with here. Single space starts with a lift, okay? Several variations of the lift, but I'm gonna show you one. Single space starts with a lift, so I'm gonna face my target. And my target is just 55, 60 degrees if this is zero. And I'm gonna start with a lift, and then I sweep, make my D-loop anchor, and let it go. Single spay. So there's really three parts to this cast. Two of the parts get blended together. So the lift, this particular style, Charles St. Pierre showed me. If you haven't met Charles, he's up in the Sage booth today. Fantastic single spay caster among other things. So my feet are facing my target and I've rotated my hips downstream. And my bottom hand is outside this hip, top hand where I like it. And I'm gonna do somewhat of a half bicep curl with my top hand, okay? Notice how the rod's still angled. My bottom hand does a reverse curl right to here, okay? And this is a real simple, compact method, great with short, medium and longer heads. But I'm just gonna get to here, I'm really gonna keep the rod on that angle as I rotate those hips around, make my D-loop and fire it off. It's a real clean, simple method. Feet are facing my target, hips rotated, rotated downstream to where I'm gonna lift. Okay, single spay. Lift, sweep, watch it splash down. With splash and go casts, the anchor and D-loop form at the same time. Anchor splashes down, D-loop forms at the same time. So the parts of the recipe, the ingredients would be the lift, the sweep, also called the dish, my splashdown where I, my anchor sets and my D-loop forms, those are all part of the ingredients. Time and temperature, okay? Time and temperature. We like a slow lift. We like a slow lift with any spay cast because Especially with splash and go cast, we have to stay connected to the line as it comes out of the water and gets aerialized. The slower it comes out, the more control I'm gonna have over it as I move it around into position, okay? And I'm not gonna accelerate until I want my D-loop and anchor to form. D-loop to form and anchor splash down right there okay right there that one came a little close undercooked that was undercooked so that slow lift is going to blend right in with my sweep and i'm not going to accelerate until my rod is about opposite with my target 
on my sweep. So I do my lift, I come around, my rod mid sweep is opposite my target, and then that's when I apply the power, I turn up the heat into my D loop. Okay, single spay. A lot of subtleties to the single spay. A lot of different recipes. That's a pretty clean and simple one. What other cast do we like? That's it, that's the favorite. Double spay. Double spay. It's probably the, uh, especially of, of uh, if you took a poll of, of Northwest casters of all levels, I would say the double spay, if I had to guess, would be the second favorite. Um, when I get new guys or I'm working with guys, the, everyone likes the snap tee, snap tee. And the double spay is kind of like the, the stepchild, the stepbrother. And any stepchild and stepbrothers in here, bear with me because I love the double spay. The double spay is a bread and butter, beautiful cast. And I think the problem, people don't embrace it because of the, uh, it doesn't have that tempo that the snap T has. The snap T has that tempo and it just, it works. Double spay starts real slow. Starts real slow. And then we have to up the tempo to make it work. I get a redo. Okay. I'm a cack hander, what can I say? <laughs> okay. Double spay. So the first ingredient of the double spay is the lift. Slow lift is always good. And if I do left hand high, that's what it looks like. I'll give you the mirror image. Lift is critical. Lift is critical in every spay cast. So quite simply, this is a Scandi, whether you have a Scandi or Skagit. You just lift with your top hand and then look how the rod comes over the top and I cross my arms, okay? Now the end of my spay line here where it meets the leader, I call that the golf ball. I call that the golf ball and that's my visual cue. So I want that golf ball out in front of me or slightly downstream. So if you're going to hit a golf ball and hit it in the fairway, it's got to be in the same part of your stance every time. If it's a little downstream, that's okay. When it gets upstream, it gets dangerous. It's too far upstream like that. And I come around and make that cast. You know it's going to happen. Bad things. Okay. So anchor placement's critical. It sets you up for success. Set you up for success. So, slow lift. I'm just gonna cross my arms. Check to make sure the golf ball's in the right spot, and then finish your cast. So, slow lift, cross my arms. Now the sweep, the D-loop stroke. This is where most people struggle. But it's also where the magic happens. So let's break down the D-loop stroke because the D-loop stroke, D-loop stroke for the double spay, snap T, any sustained anchor cast is pretty much the same. And there's different ways to get it done. There's different ways to get it done. So after I set the anchor, ready to make my D-loop stroke. Now in general, I want to come across on a nice flat plane like this. And as the rod comes around, my top hand swivels to the key position. Key position is your casting position, right? And in general, your top hand is going to be about cheek height and out from your shoulder. Bottom hand's here. Notice the angle of the rod. From here, I can make my forward cast by simply pulling both hands down and then finishing with the tip of the rod. Get some. Ah. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. So, the loop stroke. That made my day. See the golf ball. Come around on a plane. Get to the key position. And then we make the forward cast, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, there's different ways to make a D-loop stroke. But here's, what, here's the rules, here's the bad ones. Here's, here's the things we don't wanna ever, ever do in a D-loop stroke. Dip, it's called the dreaded dip. Anyone ever heard of the dip or dipped? The dreaded dip is bad. And I'll show you that in a minute. The dip, an abrupt lift, all right? You don't stay on plane, your rod comes up. Too soon, too steep. Something we call cut in the corner, which makes you a funny looking D-loop. This is cut in the corner, okay? Instead of coming all the way around like, like this, I get to here and I come straight back, cut in the corner. I believe that's also known as trunking when the rod gets back like this, okay? That's also bad. What else is bad on the D-loop stroke? Anybody? We've got the dreaded dip, too steep of an angle, which is kind of an abrupt lift. Too slow. Too slow. That's right, and we'll get into speed here, but yeah, too slow. Decelerating, that's related to too slow. So let's go through those. Well, I'll show you the good one first, then we'll get to the bad stuff. So, D-loop stroke. Chris King, he's here. Where's Chris? I'm going to steal all this material today. I've heard him talk about the tray of drinks, which I love, and I use all the time, but I always give him credit. But what that really illustrates is that top hand coming around flat. Okay. So, D-loop stroke. Nice and flat, coming around to the key position. Now let's talk about speed. Let's talk about speed. I can do a D-loop stroke, regardless of the cast, we'll do a snap T. Low and fast, okay? Low and fast. Or high and slow, okay? Both casts worked, but both casts had one ingredient that every spay cast absolutely has to have, and that's an anchor. And the anchor is everything from the end of your spay line to your fly. So when your D-loop forms, that's your grip, your traction, holds the load created by your D-loop. But how you get there matters, okay? That was low and fast, or I could go high and slow, both casts had the same amount of anchors. How about medium height, medium speed? Okay. They all had the same ingredient, and that was 15 plus feet of anchor stick, which is my leader. I have a mono leader on. If I had the Skagit line and sink tip, eight to 10 feet of that sink tip anchors the Skagit line every time, regardless of how you get there. Now, I can't go high and fast. Why? Blow an anchor before I even make the cast, right? I can't go high and fast. I have to go high and slow. What happens if I go low and slow? Too much anchor, not enough D-loop. Can't do that either, okay? So this gets into what I call the spay casting equation the height of the D-loop stroke plus the speed of the D-loop stroke not only equals the amount of load you get, but more importantly, the amount of anchor stick left prior to the forward cast. So we always need the same amount of anchor stick depending on the setup. So think Scandi 15 feet plus sometimes. Think Skagit 10 feet, sometimes less. And the variable there would be 
length of rod, length of sink tip, way to fly. But for the average setup that we fish, if you have a Scandi with a 10-foot Versaliter and a 5 feet of tippet, that's 15 feet. That's a pretty standard rig. Skagit line, 10 feet of T11, you know, this much leader and a whatever fly, pretty standard rig. So, to me, the D-loop stroke is where the magic happens. And it's really the second part between here and here where things really mean something. They really mean something in the second half of the D-loop stroke. Between here and here is just set up so I can get my rod here and do this. Okay. Now, I can screw up the first half of the D-loop stroke real easy. Real easy. Okay. With too much heat. Watch what happens if I go really fast, early. Okay. Now, I want my D-loop to form right here not up there. Okay? So if you go too fast in the second half of the deep, or the first half of the D-loop stroke, your D-loop is going to form too far away from you and get stretched up and down the stream and st instead of stretched towards the bank where we want it behind our rod. Okay? So the only way, well, one way. One way you can screw up the first half is too much speed. Okay, too much speed. My D-loop's too far up there. The dip, the dreaded dip. It's a good old dreaded dip. And it's first cousin, the insta-lift, insta we'll call it. The old dreaded dip. The old dreaded dip. It turned over. Okay. The dreaded dip. So the dip happens usually mid-sweep, mid-D-loop stroke, right here, right? And so if I dip, I'm putting line on the water. The only way out of a dip is, a, is an abrupt lift, which is also bad, okay? So its first cousin is the abrupt lift following the dip. Dip, abrupt lift, oh boy. We're, things are falling apart here, okay? So it's hard, to, hard not to do that lift. Because the whole point of the D-loop stroke, besides making the D-loop and charging up the rod for the cast, is to gradually unstick everything but my leader, okay? Gradually unstick it. Right now, the whole line's stuck. I'm gonna gradually unstick it, everything but my leader, okay? And if you dip, Instead of taking line off the water, you're putting line on the water, okay? Pretty obvious why that's bad. What was the other one? Decelerating. That's a total cast killer. Total cast killer. And the deceleration often happens when people start too fast. Start too fast and then kind of slow down. No D-loop. Nothing there, okay? So if you decelerate between here and here, your anchor's not gonna get pulled straight and you'll have a bloody L, which we'll talk about in a second. You won't have a charged up D-loop, okay? So decelerating is bad. So, all comes back to height and speed of the D-loop stroke, and then we have to also enter in angle, okay? Height, speed, and angle. You can get away with a little rise in elevation, okay? A little bit, a little bit. With shorter heads, not very much, not very much. Flatter is better, because all I need to get that rod into position is this. Boom, right there, the swivel to the key position. Perfect casting position for short heads. As you fish longer heads, 
you may lift and drift a little more because it's a longer line, just like you would with a single-handed. As you lengthen the line out, you lengthen your stroke and you reach back, right? Right? They're just sticks that bend with string on them, right? Okay? So the D-loop stroke, the second half of it, is where the magic happens. Where the magic happens. Now, this is where we could have a long debate about what a forward cast looks like. But there's an easy way to do it. And that's just pull both hands down. Okay? Both hands down, finish with a tip. I've heard this referred to as the barrel of the bat, right here, the butt of the rod. We want to engage the butt, and you'll never engage the butt if you push the tip through the stroke, okay? So if you can pull down and then finish with a the tip, then we've engaged the butt, middle of the rod, and the tip, and that'll make a nice, efficient, compact cast. Okay. I think I'm done. If anyone has any questions afterwards, feel free to hit me up. I appreciate you all coming to this event. And uh, thank you, Ashton Fly Shop, for putting this on.